Introduction to Neural Networks with C-Sharp, Class 7, Part 2. Welcome to Part 2. In this part, we will learn how to implement simulated annealing. To implement simulated annealing, you need a problem where the solution, or at least a potential solution to that problem, can be represented as a long stream of numbers. This is the same as was with genetic algorithms. And just as with genetic algorithms, these long streams of numbers must be always of the same length. Every solution must have the same length of numbers. This works well for the traveling salesman because every trip through the cities has the same number of cities. If he's visiting 50 cities, that list is going to be 50 numbers long. This also works well for training a neural network because the neural network will have a fixed length because it's always going to have the same matrix and threshold set up. You're not going to be training, say, a three-layer neural network against a four-layer neural network. That's not how simulated annealing works. You are training one neural network to improve upon it. We will begin by looking at the structure of the code that we will use to implement simulated annealing. A simulated annealing class is provided that implements the basis of the simulated annealing algorithm. It works very similar to the other training algorithms in that you call the iterate method and it cycles over however many iterations you call it for, ever improving the solution as it goes. Classes must be created that implement the simulated annealing class so that you can create solutions for your own sorts of problems. This book will show you how to create a simulated annealing solution for both the traveling salesman and for neural network programming. You should create a randomized function inside of any simulated annealing class that you implement. This randomized function will randomize the numbers in a way specified by the temperature that is passed into it. To implement simulated annealing, we need a consistent way to scale the temperature. The temperature must be scaled from the starting temperature to the ending temperature in increments as we go through the number of cycles that we do for each iteration. To do this, we use the following equation. Rather than just scale uniformly from the starting temperature to the ending temperature, we can use the following function to generate the step value. The step value is the amount we decrease by the current cycle. This will allow us to decrease it logarithmically, which should provide a more consistent result to the simulated annealing process. Here you see that the natural log base, E, is raised to a somewhat complex looking exponent, which is C, which is the cycles minus one in the denominator, so starting with the zeroth cycle, becoming the, the uh, first cycle is what the minus one is to accomplish, is divided by the logarithm of the S value, which is the current starting temperature, over the ending temperature. This allows us to divide and calculate the amount changed by each step and then apply this change logarithmically. And here you see the iteration function. This is called over and over again by the program to continue training with simulated annealing. Just as with the other training algorithms, this iteration function is called until the error level has reached a level that we are satisfied with. You see that we first start out with creating a unit type array called best array. Unit type is a generic type that specifies the type that is used up to make up the solution. In genetic algorithms this was similar to the gene. So for the traveling salesman problem, which we're going to look at shortly, this is a integer, which is the city number that the traveling salesman is visiting for that leg of the potential solution. For neural network, the unit type is a double because that is a part of the matrix that has been flattened to a linear array of numbers. 
the best array is kept so that we keep track of what the best array that we have reached so far. As we're randomly changing the numbers, we will often create arrays of solutions that are not as well suited to the to the problem as others. We don't want to worsen the problem, so we always create a best array so that we can compare and see how much we've improved upon the solution. We set the error to the determination of the error. This is the determination of the error that must be implemented for each implementation of the simulated annealing. The way that you determine the error is very different for the traveling salesman compared to how you would train a neural network. We create the best array by simply copying it and then we begin to loop through all of the cycles in, the, in this iteration. An iteration works by going through the number of cycles that we specified we're going to loop over this amount so that we can perform the same function for each of these cycles. So it's really kind of two levels. You're calling the iterations, but inside of the iterations, it's cycling from the starting temperature to the ending temperature. Inside of the loop, we begin by creating a double that is going to hold the current error level. This will be calculated as we go through each cycle. This is going to help us to determine whether we've improved the situation or not. Then we call randomize. Randomize is how we randomize the cities according to the temperature or the matrix elements for the neural network. This function must be implemented by subclasses creating simulated annealing algorithms. We also see that we calculate the current error and this is held so that we can determine how much we are improving the solution. Next we check to see if we truly have improved the error or not. If we have improved the error then we are going to set the best array to the current array and we're going to also set the error to whatever the current error was because we've improved the error. We won't always do this and this is an issue with the simulated annealing algorithm, but the various random intervals that we create will ultimately improve the error rate for many solutions. The put array is then called to save this and we calculate the ratio according to the formula that we looked at earlier in this part. We take the the uh, math.exp to calculate a logarithmic rate of decay for the temperature as we progress from the beginning temperature unto the ending temperature. This then continues for other cycles. This concludes part two. In the next part you will learn how to actually implement some examples using the simulated annealing algorithm that we just created. We hope you will continue with part three. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.